Hello and welcome to DeMisto's Getting Started Guide. First and foremost, I want to welcome you to the DeMisto team. We are excited to have you and we look forward to working with you. My name is Andrew Shama and I'm going to be helping you get started with your first integration. Please note that this tutorial assumes that you have a working instance of DeMisto. Without further ado, let's get started. This is the settings dashboard, and it is where we configure and create new integrations. To start, let's click this blue button that says BYOI, or bring your own integration. Here we see the Demisto IDE. This more than likely looks different than other IDEs you may have previously worked with. So let's take a minute and point out what makes it different. One of the greatest tools you will have while creating your integration is the Script Helper. The Script Helper is a library of all of the different common server functions within Demisto. If you want to format a table, manipulate data, or post something to the boardroom, more often than not, there is a function for it here. The other important part of the IDE is the Integration Settings menu. Let's take a look. We are going to create an English to Yoda translator today. In the basic section, we have the ability to name an integration, add a description of it, and tell customers what type of integration it is. I'm going to name ours Yoda Speak. And for the description, let's put creating an integration we are. Now, since this is a utility, we will select utilities as the type. If, if you notice, we have a checkbox for fetches incidents. This setting tells Demisto that our integration has a command called fetch incidents and will need to run periodically. This feature is what makes Demisto so incredibly useful for our customers since it ingests events and turns them into incidents in Demisto. Since we are just translating something today, we don't need to use this, but we will cover this in depth in another video. The last part is the logo. When we create an integration that is open to the public, we need to use an image that looks good. We recommend an image no larger than 4 kilobytes and in the PNG format. I have one ready that we will use, so I will drag it into the box. Next we have the parameter section. This is where we add our global variables to the configuration for the integration. Since we are using an API for this integration, we need to set up the proxy settings, allow for insecure requests, and if we use an API key, get that ready as well. We will call the first one proxy and give it the Boolean type. The initial value we are going to set as false, and for the display name, we will write use system proxy. Next, we will add the insecure setting called insecure. This will also be a boolean. Set the initial value to false as well, and we will write trust any certificate. We will also add URL. This will be a short text and needs to be required. For the default value, let's use the API endpoint and write API URL for the description. Lastly, we add API key. This will be encrypted and have no default value. We are now ready for our main command. Before we start coding, let's configure it in the settings. Let's open up settings and go to commands. Click add command and let's name this yoda-speak-translate. It will take the argument text. Let's also mark this as mandatory, and for the description, write text to translate.
For outputs, let's make it so that we can see the translation in the context by adding Yoda speak dot the force dot translation to the context path. We name it this way to follow the Demisto context convention of brand name dot object dot property. For description, we will also write translation this is with the typeset as string. Now we are ready to write some code. Let's start with our imports. I'm going to be using JSON, collections, as well as requests. This part allows us to ignore certificate warnings and is part of the insecure setting. First, I'm going to add some of our global variables. Notice how they are all named in all caps. This is part of our Demisto code standards and is used to distinguish them from arguments which are not capitalized. I can use parameters in any command within the integration, which is why we call them global. Next, I put in our execution block. This part tells Demisto that when a command is called in the war room or a playbook, which specific function we need to run. For example, when someone types bang yoda speak translate, we want the translate command to fire. So, underneath the command, I will add the translate command function. Let's open back up the settings menu and connect some dots. Here in commands, we see the command name we put in earlier. This part of our code glues together the configuration with the actual code. Next, we need our translate command and translate functions. The translate command function is where we will handle our context, pass arguments, and build a human readable output. We need a way to take an input from the war room so we can translate it. So I will create an argument called text. This is the same argument name we wrote in the settings menu. We will pass this argument back to our translate function as a variable. Let's work on the translate function. This is where we make our API calls, handle any business logic, and do any filtering of the results. This function will accept the text variable we created earlier, and will return the response from the API. I'm going to add a helper function up here to handle the API call. Since this function could fail on a bad API call, we need to handle the errors. Typically, we would raise an error, but this wouldn't give us much information other than the stack trace. So, we will use a function from the script helper called return error and pass along the error message that way. I'll also add in a function to make nested keys accessible here. This will help with formatting our data. Now that we have data to work with, let's return to the command function and format the results. Here we are opening two dictionaries, one for the human readable and another for the context. Let's create a table out of the human readable dictionary so the translation will look nice in the war room. Go to the script helper and let's select table to markdown. Click copy to script. We will call this table Yoda says and give the function our dictionary. For the context, we can make sure we only update new information by adding this part. Okay, it looks like we are done with our translate code. But let's also add a test function so we can see if the integration fails. I'll add another command to the execution block called test module. You don't need to add a command for this in the settings since it is already a built-in command. Since the test command does not accept arguments, we need to create a test string for the translate function to test. So I will create one here and pass it to the translate command. Since we already handled errors in this command, I don't have to do anything special. Lastly, we return OK. This lets Demisto know that the integration is working correctly. Looks like we are ready to test this out. Click the Save button and then the X. Now we will search for Yoda and click Add Instance. We don't need a proxy or insecure, so we will leave them on their defaults. I do have an API key, but since we marked the type as encrypted, 
it displays the stars here. Lastly, the URL. Remember the test function we put into our integration? Let's hit test and see if it works. Oops, looks like it failed since we entered the URL incorrectly. Let's test it again. Perfect, looks like it's working. Click done and let's head over to the war room. Type bang yoda speak translate. And for text, let's enter hello, my name is Andrew. We are learning about integrations. Perfect, looks like it works. Here we see our table that we created. Let's also take a look at the context. Notice how Yoda speak is the root for the force. If the translation would change the next time we fire the command, it will update the translation field here. But what is an integration without a playbook? Let's make one real quick. Click Playbooks and click the blue button that says New Playbook. We will call this one Yoda Speak. In the task library, search for Yoda and we will see our integration. Select it and click Add where it says Yoda Speak Translate. I want this playbook to translate the details field in an incident into Yoda Speak. So for text, we will click the brackets right here. Next, select Incident Details and click on Details. Go ahead and click Close and OK. Now let's have the playbook print the translation in the war room. In the task library, search for print under utilities. For the value, click the brackets. Notice how we have an entry here for the Yoda speak translation. If we click it, we can select the translation context that we specified in the integration settings. Click close and OK. Lastly, hit the save button and click the X. Let's see it in action. Click Incidents and then press the blue button that says New Incident. I'm going to name this That's No Moon, It's a Space Station. And for the details, let's type The prequel movies are more entertaining than the new Disney movies. Click Create New Incident and select the incident we just created. Navigate to Work Plan and we can see that our playbook worked. Check the War Room and let's see if it printed. Looks like it did. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We would be more than happy to help you. You are now ready to create integrations. May the DBOP be with you.